Yeah, no, I think, you know, we did a good job stepping. Um, and then we turn over the ball at the top of the box. And um, so we're in a moment of transition, um, getting out and turn the ball over the top of the box. And obviously, uh, the, they did really well with it. And 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 again, I think, in, and we've talked about it, you know, you, you got to have – second third actions against these guys because when they when they break lines they go to goal quick and they go with numbers um you know i think as far as the way we wanted to come out you know i thought we actually did a good job in the first 20 or so minutes defensively um but i thought we we're really poor with the ball once we got once once we won it and 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 when you're um you know when you can't connect passes when you can't move your team forward you know it looks a lot like the first half i, I think in the second half we were a bit more um a bit more aggressive with the way we wanted to play. And, and again, the goal comes from um, defending in a lower block and then, and then break it out. And it was, uh, and, and again, against these guys, um, we, we, we just got to be better with the ball. We got to take, we got to take, you know, we got to take our chances. Um, but I think again, the, the effort was fantastic. It just, uh, with 10 minutes left, it was a, you know, it was a tough goal to swallow. And then one game into this three game format, I'm uh, I'm curious maybe how, how you think that might have um, kind of af affected the the narrative or kind of the strategies in this game and then what you guys are looking at heading into that that home game. Yeah, no, I think it's I think with the setup, it's it's very clear is that you got we got to win a, we got to win a game away from home in, in in order to go through. So I mean that was the mindset uh, going into the game. Um, and and again, if it if it you know against these guys, if it went to PKs, I felt like we we're in we're we're in a good spot as well. Um, but we got to now repivot and 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 figure out the best the the best uh, mode of attack going into our, the the home game. I, you know, I think it's going to be a different game, um, and we got to take advantage of this this opportunity to get you know weeks worth of training in and and, and really dissect this game um, to see where we can make incremental gains and um, approach it the right way. But but again, I think you know uh, missing a few players. Um, we knew it was going to be difficult, and then you lose Bodie, um, and so we we're uh, we we're scrambling a little bit with a with uh, you know changes and subs given the uh, the play you know and Bodie played center back for for more than half the game uh, as in a four, and so there was a lot of a lot of different dynamics and variables that went into it. Um, but but again, I think we put ourselves in a good spot with ten minutes left, and uh, we just got to do better in those moments. And then. Uh, you mentioned the guys that that weren't here tonight. Um, I know that Silva, Glad, and Chicho were were questionable. What what needs to happen uh, for them to be able to play in the next game? Well, you just need to pass uh, the protocols to get back to the group. You know, I think Chicho trained with us on Thursday, and you know we did a walkthrough on Friday. Um, so the expectation is that you know he'll get some training in this week, and we'll see where he's at from a fitness perspective. Uh, Jay Glad. We're optimistic that he'll be available for the game on on, on next Monday. Um, however, again, he was he was feeling a bit of pain yesterday, so it, it's really dependent on how he recovers. Um, and then Marcelo should be joining the group um, Tuesday, um, if not get a little workout in tomorrow. So we should have some reinforcements heading into game two. Awesome, thank you. Yep. All right, Johnny, your line is now open. Hey Pablo, I just wanted to ask first off, how uh, how proud are you of these guys? Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, no, no, ex extremely proud. Uh, I mean, again, uh, there's guys playing in in, in positions um, that they've never played. Bodie Bodie was a winger two years ago, and now he's a center back, um, and so you know the the it's one thing to come into Houston. Uh, you know, with everyone available and everyone. Um, but it's another thing to ask players to to play outside their comfort zone. And 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 again, I think for me, it really is a testament to the mindset of this group and the belief that they have in one another um, to be able to, you know, adjust on the fly and 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 make a difference and to keep a team, you know, like Houston, um, you know, keep, stay in the game for for 80 plus minutes away from home um, with with all these different variables. Again, I'm I'm, I'm extremely proud of the you know, the guys and, and and what they're willing to do for the team. And I think at the end of the day, that's what's going to see us through. Um, and and the effort tonight was fantastic. Pablo, what did you think of Diego Luna's performance tonight? I know he had that giveaway kind of at the, the edge of the box at the end there, but 
90 minutes, first full playoff game or first playoff game for him. What'd you make of his, his goal, his, his entire performance in general? Yeah, no, I thought he had a fantastic game. Um, and, and again, I think we have to be better on the ball to get, you know, guys like Luna and, and Saab on the ball and in and, and better positions. Um, the, one, the one thing I'll say about the, the goal that he scored, it really came from uh, an incredible amount of effort to really break beyond and, and, and get to the spot that he got to. And that takes a lot of dogged work and, um, you know, it's it's really interesting. Sometimes it's it takes a while for a young player to kind of grow into his own. You know, I've seen in the last three games um, a transformation uh, in, in Diego, and 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 again, not in his attacking capabilities, but in the commitment that he has to the team and doing all the little things to help everyone else out. And then, obviously, you know, scoring in three consecutive games um, is 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 monumental for a young player. And uh, you know, he's he's showing. Uh, a lot of a, a lot of leadership out in the field, his communication, his positioning, um, you know, his decisions are getting better and better. Um, so I'm super proud of the young man. I think he's uh, put in a lot of work in the last uh, last year to really take advantage of these moments. And, and now we just need uh, the rest of the group to to follow. And, uh, you know, I think if Diego's uh, playing the way he is and, 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 and we can step up to that level, I think we'll, we'll be in a good way. Uh, my last question for you, Pablo, is about your game plan, uh, those two subs that you made, bringing on Anderson and uh, and Andres, really kind of changed the game, really opened it up, and uh, we were able to really kind of hit Houston on the counter. Going into the game, what was your kind of thoughts and your game plan going in formation-wise and also with those halftime subs? Uh, formation-wise, we we're, were playing a bit of a, you know, a 3-4-3 three, three with our wingbacks cognizant of, of Quinones and uh, Dorsey. Um, and then – you know, we worked quite a bit on 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 how we press up into the half spaces. So with Bossy, um, in particular, Bossy, you know, I think he's 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 a guy that likes to hang out and and, and drop in the wide positions. But Kerski did the same, and so the idea was to to be stout defensively and and catch these guys on a break. And you know, whilst it looked good during the week, um, again, I I don't think we were good enough with the ball when we won it. Um, and, and, you know, what I always say is, you know, teams like to press, you know, five or six seconds after they lose the ball. We've got to work hard as a group uh, to maintain possession of the ball for five or six seconds. And there requires second and third actions after we win it. And I, and I feel like we got a little bit fatigue as a half one wore on. And and, it, and again, I think these guys are really difficult to, to, to break down. And what we've seen is in transition. There, there is time and space um, to, to really exploit. And, you know, I think Andres and, and Anderson were, were you know, based upon their 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 physical capabilities and what they bring to the group as far as speed and dynamism, um, felt like it was a good opportunity to get those guys on the field and exploit the space from behind. And and obviously the, you know, the, the goal came from, you know, uh, Andres finding Anderson and Anderson finding Luna. So, um, you know, we'll go back and, and, and look at how we can better defend from the front uh, to apply a little bit more pressure, obviously at home. Um, but again, I think for us, the most important thing is when we win the ball, we've got to be, make better decisions to be able to, you know, put, put them on their heels and make them defend a little bit. Sorry. I'm going to, I'm going to pull a tray here and ask one more question. Sorry, Pablo. Uh, when you went into that locker room at the end of the game, what did you see on your players' faces and what was the kind of general feel and attitude in that locker room? I know it was kind of a next man up mantra, especially with so many guys out injured, what do you expect from them in this upcoming week? And again, what did you kind of see in that locker room uh, when you looked around the room? Obviously disappointment, you know, because I think we're, you know, 10 minutes away from, from you know, being really pleased with, uh, you know, the result and putting us in a position to win the game. Um, you know, but, but, but again, I think it's in these times where you've got to really uh, roll up your sleeves and, and, and it comes and, and the game is really defined in moments. Right. And I think, um, you know, the guys are obviously frustrated, um, but there's there's a lot of good stuff and and there's a lot of stuff that we need to get better at in, in lieu of this next game. So, um, but again, I think the, the effort and the commitment can never be questioned. I, I think our our decisions with the ball and our ability to possess a little more needs to get better for the next game. Awesome. Thank you, Pablo. Yep. All right. You say we'll finish with you. Your line is open. Thank you. Um, Pablo, preguntarte algo con respecto al juego. Eh, se notaba que el planteamiento eh, 
daba para ser defensivo. Eh, creo que tanto Rubio como Sabarino, Luna, que eran los que estaban adelante, no cruzaban tanto los tres cuartos de cancha, a pesar de que reventaban el balón hacia esa área. Cuando cae el primer gol, cambia el método, van hacia adelante. Uh -huh. Eh, logran empatar en el segundo tiempo, pero después cae el gol casi al final en el segundo tiempo, pero antes de eso, perdón, eh, volvió a lo mismo, volvió a ser muy defensivo el planteamiento. Lo que buscabas era tratar de llegar a la instancia de los penales, tratar de ver un poco más el lado de ese porque no había muchas opciones hacia adelante. Sí, yo creo que sabemos que son un gran equipo en casa y vimos en el video que le, le encanta jugar en los espacios en el, 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 el central y queremos achicar ese espacio y, y yo creo que los primeros 20 minutos antes que marcaron el primer gol hicimos muy bien el trabajo después cuando ganaba el balón hay que, hay que aguantar el balón y con el Saba y el Diego en el medio eh, pensamos que íbamos a aguantar un poco más el balón para sacar el equipo para adelante y hacer que, que, que ellos defienden un poco más. Pero eso no, 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 no salió uh, como quisimos, pero yo creo que con uh, Andrés y el, 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 el Anderson los dos uh, aprovecharon los, el, los espacios y, y contra este equipo el espacio siempre es a, a la espalda porque le, le encantan el balón y juegan muy bien y aprovechamos en el, en el segundo gol yo creo que el, cómo fue el partido fue más emoción o sea cuando marcaba el primer cuando estaba buscando el gol eh, estás más tenés más confianza en salir a presionar eh, porque tenés que encontrar el resultado y ya cuando metimos el gol yo creo que no, no, no fue el plan que nos tiramos para atrás fue para marcar mejor los espacios en el medio pero claro eh, son, son un buen equipo en, siempre encuentran los espacios y la movilidad del balón a veces es difícil y cuando te, te pasan por atrás tienes que sa salir a, a defender y, y por eso yo creo que más veces que no nos tiramos un poco más para atrás Bueno, si las cosas salen bien eh, se recuperan algunos de los lesionados obviamente el planteamiento va a tener que cambiar sobre todo porque ya no hay margen de error ahora a partir de ahora es ganar o, o ganar para Real Salt Lake para seguir avanzando en, en la MLS, en las rondas eh, eliminatorias. Sí, yo creo que, claro, eh, los, los partidos en casa son diferentes que los partidos de visitante y yo creo que tenemos que encontrar la manera de poner un poco más presión en el balón, ganar más el balón más alto y, como dije, y ya cuando ganamos el balón tenemos que tomar mejores decisiones para, 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 para crear chances en el arco. Eso, eso, eso va a ser las cosas que vamos a, a, a trabajar este, este, esta semana, pero yo creo que el partido que viene va a ser mucho, eh, bastante diferente que este partido. Ah, también bastante diferente por la cuestión climática. En Houston se está presentando una ola de clima súper diferente a lo que estamos viviendo actualmente en Utah, lo cual puede también beneficiar un poco considerando que ustedes ya regresan a entrenar a partir de esta semana. Sí, yo creo que, mira, eh, eh, cuando salimos a, a, había un frío y llegamos acá y hace un calor con humedad y eso son cosas que no puede eh, o sea, saber antes que llegas. Y, y claro, cuando estamos entrenando toda la, la semana, eh, la clima, el clima es, es muy lindo y, y llegamos acá un poco calor y yo creo que también en el primer, el primer tiempo, por tanto... Eh, buscar el balón y defender como defendimos, se, se cansaron varios. Y yo creo que eso tiene mucho que ver con, con el clima, que va a ser diferente la semana que viene. Bueno, gracias. Okay. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you, guys. Pablo. Hey, Kev. Uh, thanks for, thanks for uh, talking to us. Uh, uh, your first MLS playoff game, what was it like out there? I mean, it was intense. The energy was high. Uh, super competitive, but I mean, it was it was it was it was great. It was definitely a great experience. So I mean, tough one on the road, but um, I definitely enjoyed being out there, and looking forward to the next one. What did you see there on that that second goal from Houston? Uh, obviously, an unfortunate uh, thing there towards the end of the game. Uh, yeah, like you said, a bit unfortunate. Um, 
but the way they play, like when they get to the final third, they move the ball quickly. It's like they're almost a bit unpredictable in a way. So, I mean, defending against them is like kind of tough, I would say, because the way they move the ball in, they're unpredictable. So, I mean, it was a difficult one and a bit unlucky on, on our end. So, I mean, fair play to them still. And then lastly for me, I'm just curious what it's been like for you uh, these last couple of weeks and months, I guess, as as you've filled in, as, as guys, have got, guys have gotten injured, you've uh, had an opportunity to play a lot more than maybe you anticipated at first. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what I'm here for. I mean, like, if my name is called, then I'll be ready. So even if, if, if guys are out, if guys are injured or whatever the case may be, um, I'm just here putting putting in the work, and whenever my name is called, I'm ready to step out there and get the job done. Awesome, thank you. All um, right, Johnny, go ahead. Johnny, you're not coming through. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you called my name. Hey, Kev, how's it going? Um, good. How about you? It's good. Thank you. My my question for you is, as a defender, coming into a game, you know, after Bodie's injury and just kind of coming into a very intense match, how do you kind of catch pace with the game, like get caught up with the speed of the game so quickly in a position where uh, you might not touch the ball as often? I mean, um, coach always tells us, like, if we're on the bench, we should, like, watch what's going on, watch, like, guys in our position, so... Being on the bench, being off the field, that's definitely what I did and try to get like as much advantage as possible for whenever I go on. So I think by me being off the field and seeing like how the game was being played and everything, the tempo and the pace and everything, um, that kind of helped me because like I was a little bit like prepared in a way by being off of the field and seeing what was going on. So whenever I got on, I knew uh, kind of what to expect. Perfect. Kev, you've played in some some major big games in the past for Jamaica and the USL Championship with Phoenix. Uh, how does the MLS playoffs compare? I mean, it's just as intense uh, as any other game, any other any other tournament, especially at this stage. Like, I mean, I've played in big games, like you said, in like Gold Cup finals and, and stuff like that. So it's just as intense. There's and the players on on both teams, our team and their team, have done the same. So it's definitely they're used to playing in those type of environments as well. So I mean, it's not just like I'm the only one going in there with like that kind of exper experience. But I mean, guys on the other team, they've I've played against them uh in the international level. So they definitely uh are used to the tempo as well and used to all those different type of stuff in major tournaments and these sta these stages of tournaments. Uh last question for you, Kev. Now that you've seen Houston once in the MLS playoffs and we get to host them now at home. Uh, what is it that you saw on the field today that made Houston so difficult to deal with and such a good team in general? I mean, like I said earlier, I think the way they move the ball, um, whenever they get to like the final third, it's a bit unpredictable. So I think that kind of gives them like uh, that little edge in a way I mean like if you're playing against a team who moves the ball well whenever they get to the final third I mean it's hard you just have to stay compact and and do your best as a defender but I mean it's it's pretty uh difficult uh playing against them when they play like that but I mean we're up for the challenge and um looking forward to the next one 
Awesome. Thanks, Kev. Yeah, Thanks. No problem. Thank you. Thanks, Kev. Appreciate it. All good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Diego, uh, congrats on the goal. Obviously, it comes in a in an overall disappointing result, but um, it was a pretty fantastic build up to the goal. Uh, what did you kind of see there? And have you guys practiced and been similar to that in training before? Uh, I think it was a, a counterattack. And I think, yeah, we're good at it. And I think that's something that, that we can use to our strengths more often. But yeah, just a counterattack. And I think uh, we took advantage of what we saw. Um, you're officially the, the youngest RSL player to ever score in the playoffs. Uh, how, uh, how does that feel? And I guess, how, how did it just feel to, to score in general? I think it, it felt like a, like another goal. Of course, you're happy when you score goals. And I don't think the what type of game or whatever it is changes. I think it's a it's a goal and you feel happy at the moment. But um, the most important thing is the result. And my goal means nothing if, if we couldn't get the three points. And then lastly, what what can you guys do better uh, in the next game to, to 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 hold on there at the end and get the result? Um, I think we can be more organized, and I think um, silly mistakes on that goal, uh, losing the ball in in our uh, in our defensive third is something that we don't need to mess around with, and I think we need to just clear it and me individually in moments like that. Just get the ball up the field. Gotcha. Thank you, Johnny. Hey, Diego, uh, tough result tonight, but question for you is that you've scored in the last three games and you've been making an impact on the field throughout the season, but now you've really added that end product. What about your game has changed recently on the on the field or even personally? Um, I think it's personally. I think mentally I've been uh, more positive with myself and and I've had the motivation of of my new son, and I think it's, it's all just changed the way I've been thinking. And... Um, yeah, it's a it's a thing individually and in, in my own mental in my own mental state where I've I've helped myself and you can see that it's working. Absolutely. Uh Diego, um, you know, what was it in the game today? You know, in the first half, Houston was pretty hard to deal with, but in the second half, you really found the ball and started to get on it more and were able to impact the game a lot more. What uh what changed? I think we uh we did a couple of tactics that helped us get into better positions. I think we solved some issues that we were not organized in. And I think, um, I think the, the weather had a big factor in, in helping us in the second half. Awesome. And Diego looking ahead to the next game in Salt Lake city, I know it'll take no extra motivation, but what do you hope to learn and take from this game going into Salt Lake to force a game three? Yeah, I think we need to finish our chances and then, um, watch film and figure out and, and talk about the things that we can't really talk about during the game and um, see where we can get at, get at them. Awesome. Thanks, Ben. All right. Is there one in the room? Yes. No. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no. Uh, just talk about, talk about this match against in yourself. Like the first, like the first half, they, they came out strong. They were shooting. The shots on goal was, was way in their advantage. Yeah. Talk about that first half and what was going on in guys' minds that first half. I think uh, you come into a game where it's, you know, 90-something degrees. Humidity is plays a factor. So I think um you come into a game like that, and I think we, we didn't start as strong as we wanted to, and they took advantage of that. And that's how games are, and that's what we need to work on, and that's what they took advantage of. So that's soccer. And, and going into the second half, you guys just struggled. What is what's your coach say about the things in the locker room going into the half? Yeah, we switched some tactics up a little bit, change of formation and kind of um things that we he saw that we needed to to get at and, and take away from them. And I think it worked. And I think we need to just finish our chances, to be honest. I think in the first half we had two, two or three maybe uh shots and then a couple of easy chances that we need we need to take advantage of. And then the second half, same thing, just um getting in the final third and making sure that we're putting the ball away when we get a chance. And going into the next match. You guys are going to have time to get get injured players, you know, ready yep. to go. What's your thoughts on going into system matches and this format that MLS has? It's just you know, it's totally different. Yeah, it's definitely different, and I think um, yeah, it, it kind of uh shows who who really is the best. You know, I think you get a chance at home and a chance away, and I think um, you got to perform under under different uh fans, and and I think it shows. Mm -hmm what team's taking advantage of the moments given and, and uh, who wants it more. Okay.